We live. <laughs> What's up? Uh, I'm Michael here with Barbaric Brutality. This is the young homie, Seven Kane. Hi. 21-7. 21-7. The kid's seven. Or the kid's uh, 21 now. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with the homie Fred from Unearned Man. And Earth. Abysmalist. Abysmalist as well as Abysmalist still together? Oh, yeah. Abysmalist okay, gotcha. Is... Yeah, no, no. Right. Then the drummer did he recently locate to relocate to Seattle? Is that true? No, that's. Uh, I mean, eventually, probably. Oh, okay, gotcha. Sorry, I, I misunderstood. He's I here for he had... the foreseeable future. Oh, okay, gotcha. good shit. I thought he already moved up there. I misunderstood. I knew he's talking about potentially moving out of SAC, but we're. I mean, they. He, he and his wife moved here, and then, uh, you know, they've been here like six months or whatever. But or they've been here a couple years now. But um, yeah, they're eventually kind of move up there. But we're we recorded a a record. That's gonna come out this year. Oh, oh shit. yeah, that's what's up. The first tape put out was the Caligari record. Was it on Caligari? Nice, hell yeah. I think was that. I saw like your first and only show, pretty much, huh? The only show. <laughs> yeah, 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 that show was tight. That was a crazy lineup. We uh, spent all winter getting ready to play shows. We we're gonna. My plan was like, oh yeah, we'll get a business ready. We're gonna like do some tours this summer, and then eventually we'll like record a record or whatever. And then uh, we play that one show, and it just. Everything got shut down, so we just decided to like move everything up, and so yeah. we, we've been recording the record very slowly over the course of like six, eight months now. So. It's all complete, everything like. No, that. it's. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are recording. It's, okay. It's like, in the process. I would say it's like 85, 90 percent done. Okay, right. nice. That's what's up, man. I'm looking forward to hearing it. We're just listening because you weren't aware that he was an abysmalist, right? I think was that the first time you had heard him? Yeah. On the way over here. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's definitely like maybe a lot of like. I don't want to say, for lack of better words, like maybe not as flashy as Iron Man. It's a little more like bare bones, like almost kind of like some hardcore like, influence yeah. almost in there. It's like headbanger shit. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be like something you don't have to like think too it's hard about. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah kind sure. of brass tacks. It's not going yeah. to like lose you. It's like the kind of thing you would go to a show and just like bang your head to. Yeah, it was hella fun live. It was like. Uh, yeah, it was a badass. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, that was fucking um, Elbow Room in uh, oh, Oakland. Right. It was in Oakland? Okay. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, crazy. Okay. It was the denunciation. <laughs> um, fucking Rest in Peace. I guess they had uh, just recently announced oh, really? they're splitting up. Yeah, as well. I didn't know. Yeah, so Rest in Peace, man. I think they're just like focusing on the other projects, but they have an Abhorrency, which is kind of like, you know, the more like, because yeah. Beastial Black Metal a little bit with it. But mm -hmm. yeah, man, that was, and then like Mortal Wound and Malignant Altar. That shit was crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was good. Dude, Malignant Altar, they're fucking. So incredible live, their drummer, the homie with the headphones, dude was just like a technician, bro. He's a, he's a pro. He's like, yeah. they were really were professionals. It's like, damn, they're on like another level, kind of, you know. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, check out Abysmal List. Obviously, everybody's probably a, pretty a fucking un, or pretty familiar with Unearnment by at this point. Yeah, I think so. But yeah. we'll just, we got uh, we reached out to the gram. We got some uh, questions. Hop into it, bro. What you got, seven? All right, number one is uh, so. Is, is unearnment just like the, the dumping, like dumping the ashes out, or what? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's not a real word. I, I made it up. Yeah. Oh, made up word? Hell yeah. It's a made up word. But inurnment is a word, and that's putting ashes into an urn. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Gotcha. It's so, <laughs> it rolls off the tongue, kind of. It's easy to, like, remember, easy to say. Yeah, that's cool. I what just you... liked all, the, like, the old death metal bands that had, like, mint at the end of yeah, the right. thing. And I, yeah, right. Yeah. And I... I always thought it'd be cool to like. Uh, Let me tag along. Make up a word, <laughs> and that way, if someone's looking up your band, it's like really easy to find. Yeah. yeah. One that comes to mind was that Swedish band Gormant. 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 Yeah, yeah, that band's <laughs> oh, yeah, Gormant. <laughs> it's kind of like Slam too, like the epicardiectomy, and there's like all those ectomies. Mm -hmm. It almost got comical. I think there was one like. 50, 50 caliber ectomy or something, you know? Like, what the? <laughs> just kidding. Get, get, like it's too ectomy. much. Get, 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 get too wild, you know? Like but, ectomy, ectomy. Yeah, it's crazy. If you're going to make up words, at least make it sound like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> almost like, almost like D beat, too, you know? Kind of D beat. Uh -huh. It's just like ridiculous, just diss everything, diss fear, you know? It's yeah. like, oh, God. <laughs> Shouts out to D beat. I love it. Uh -huh. but, Shout out to diss fear. So, what you got, homie? This one's uh, this is another pressing issue for sure. Um, the internet needs to know. Do you let Oreos get soft in milk, or are you a reckless human that eats them dry? Uh, I go like right in the middle. Yeah. Like I dip it, but I still like it to have a little crunch. Mm -hmm. You never go dry though, because like I don't think I can go dry Oreos. If I have to, I oh, will. Okay, gotcha. No, no. I, 
<laughs> so, all right, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> my preferred Oreo delivery method is, is at the bottom of a bowl of ice cream. Oh, but, shit, okay, uh, nice. Hell yeah. What thoughts on the McFlurry? Uh, McFlurries, Oreo McFlurries? Yeah. Pretty fire. Know, yeah, it's, been, it's been a while, huh? It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, were, cookies and cream, I think that. You said Oreos and ice cream. My, my mind went to McFlurry. Uh, Their marketing has worked, bro. I'm not a big McFlurry <laughs> fan because it reminds me of Spooners. What's new? Spooners frozen treats at Burger King. Do you, are you old enough to remember Spooners uh, from Burger King? I know the name. Like, I felt like I know. Google it. It's uh, well, I'm, th I'm 31, so it's probably been around. The Spoon uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Th Right, I'm not gonna go on right now, but what's the phones over here? The, <laughs> I want to look. I got all excited. Oh my god! It's basically the same thing. Um, and I used to get them all the time as a kid. And then I went there with my dad. I was like 10. Yeah. And I asked for spooners, and the person didn't know what it was. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, just continued it, bro. It's my whole childhood. Oh my god. <laughs> Crush, bro. So stir it up. It's cool. Okay. Shots out to McFlurry. Shots out to the spooner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna compete. It went under. It folded. <laughs> the spooners. That's <laughs> at the spooners. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, what about you, Seven? What, what do you do? We talked about it earlier. You didn't tell me your answer. Oh, yeah. Jack in the Box soft? also has a, like an Oreo shake. Oh, Jack in the Box? I think so. I no, Jack in the Box is like the low rung for me. Like, of like they're I'm, like... I'm a low rung person. You, though, so. You're the low rung? I, I feel like I can't touch that rung anymore. Okay. I felt like once I got past like 23, I was like, all right, I'm not wasted in the middle of the night fucking getting Jack in the Box tacos. Is Jack in the Box... Who got curly fries? Oh yeah. Okay, so then that that's what I, that's that's what I'll be going for if I'm going to Jack in the Box, pretty much. But I'm a degenerate. I'll eat Arby's. Like some people are like, you eat Arby's like a Arby's. Like, Arby's is different, man. It's a little rough. Dude, but, you know, uh, are you an Arby's man or no? I love Arby's. Oh yes, it, but they've changed. It's they're, so polarizing. They, <laughs> they, they stepped their game up too much. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they've introduced like the whole deli line and everything. You know, you go in and get a Reuben. It's like I don't want a Reuben from Arby's. I want roast beef. And maybe that cheddar that sauce. Good ass cheddar. <laughs> they have they have the meats now, and it's like you used to just have like liquid roast beef mm. and, and like <laughs> cheese goo. And you could get five of those things for five dollars. Darby's yeah. holiday five for five fifty five deal. And now they're like five dollars each. Now they have the meats. Check this out. So side story real quick. <laughs> when I was about, I think I was about eight years old. My brother was uh, always like eight years older than me. He had his license. We'd mop around together, run some errands, right? We went to. Arby's, we got the five for five deal. Slow roasted regular roast beef sandwiches for just five fifty five. We'll even give wrap them. We had the five, like probably each got five roast beef sandwiches. We had to go to Home Depot. And I crushed them. I didn't crush all five of them. We're in Home Depot. Probably a half hour later, I have a hoodie on. I pull an Arby's roast beef sandwich out of my pocket. Just <laughs> had it on deck, and he just died, man. He's like, what the? Hell? <laughs> but yeah, you gotta love those deals. You know, like thirty nine cent hamburgers from uh, McDonald's. Rest in peace. Dude. Yeah, those that days are gone, man. <laughs> that was like that was my whole Sunday as a child. Just oh, straight up, dude. Me, me and my brothers would go and get a dozen of them, and just that was what we ate all day long. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man. Good times, good times. We're just reminiscing. This interview just turned turned into us reminiscing on fast food. I'm a piece of shit. I ate a lot of fast food. Dude, I fucking love it, man. I'm no shame in the game. No shame in the game. Did you weigh in on Arby's? You fuck with it? No. I would. I just remember I I'd only really had it in Oklahoma, and I was yeah. kind of it was kind of like the only thing around. For you a have second. it with Arby sauce. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, kind of have could, to have the sauce. I could deal. I was like, all right, I, yeah. get, I get it. But <laughs> it just really, from like just just from hearing about it, I never really. I don't think I ever really it's gone. It's so Arby's, like, polarizing though. A lot of people hate on Arby's. It's like. They're like, yeah, I mean, for, for good reason. Yeah, it's like the truck stop, Midwestern, you know, just like a like yeah. liquid, <laughs> like a liquid, Li liquid beef, sandwich. Liquid beef. <laughs> and then boil it to, to a solid, oh <laughs> solid steak. Oh man, that's fucked up. All right, on to the next one. We're, We're going in the weeds, man. We're going in the weeds. Uh, this is like a two-parter. The power violence passed, and favorite non-metal riff. What? Someone that yeah. someone that knows you. To, someone uh, wants to know about your power violence past. Okay. Um, We're going straight Nardwar with I these interviews, man. I mean, I'm like man. a power <laughs> violence guy, so I don't yeah. know. Like, uh, I don't know who asked that fucking question. Oh, I can tell yeah, you that right. was the homie Ryan uh, Ryan Fleischer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I was like, yeah, there's a couple people who know you on here, so uh, like, like a million years cool. ago, I played in a band called the Children's Crusade. <laughs> Fucking bad, dude. I feel like I like 
we played Stack a that. few times. Dude, I know that name because I was in like Thrasher Power Rounds bands around that time as well. Like, yeah, so like, yeah. I was in a band called Brutal Assault. We were like very bad. Oh, I remember. But, we, you were Brutal Assault? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure we, we played. We probably played together. We played like, like, yeah, off, off the grid. Together. Yeah, dude. I was just telling him about Off the Grid the other day, dude. We played oh, there so yes. much. We played with Second Opinion. Uh, we played with uh, Asshole uh, Assassination uh, Squad. That was cool, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Arm, apathetic Ronald McDonald played off the grid with yeah. us. That was sick, dude. Hell yeah. Fucking <laughs> power That's cool. 2006, probably. Dude, uh -huh. fuck. That's crazy. Uh, I, you said that name, and I was like, fuck, dude. I like. There's like, sometimes you recognize a band name, but that one was so familiar. I'm like, I almost feel like we played with you or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a small world. I lived in. <laughs> That's cool. I lived in Santa Cruz at the time. Uh, it was a two piece band, just me, me on guitar and vocals and a drummer. Uh -huh. Uh, and like our first tour, we played SAC, and the show was awesome. And so on our second tour, we played SAC three times. <laughs> and uh, the Sacramento tour. Made Hell friends yeah. with like Tell Fly Dead and. and oh uh, yeah, that's how. It kind of, is that how you met Ryan? Yeah. Oh yeah. fuck yeah, that's he right. Booked, he booked uh, one of our shows here. Dude, we told that's totally he, how. Like yeah, we. He told me like ten years crazy, later, it was, like the first show he ever booked. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so me and uh, me and Ryan used to be in a band together. It was like uh, called the Prequels. We were like, just started out as like a weird like, I don't even know like non-denominational punk band, just being young like preteens, you know. And then like from there we went to like street punk. There was like a little rift in the band. Looking back, yeah, it was years ago, but it was like all this drama. So we split. He formed Dubs Like Dead, and we formed Brutal Salt. And it was just like we were almost like rival bands at the time, you know. But like obviously we squashed our beefs years later. But just funny to think I haven't thought about a lot of these like names and stuff for years dude that's funny you still ever listen to any power, power rounds anymore oh, yeah i mean yeah. I'm, I'm a i'm a power rounds guy that's like favorite power rounds band of all, all time you got of all time yeah just curious <laughs> i can name mine right now uh capitalist casualties hell yeah we, he was just <laughs> mentioned it last night yeah. uh he was using a cat that had a capitalist casualties sticker on there and he's mm -hmm. like i'd never heard of i think they're probably one of my top five favorite bands of all time yeah, that's like sure. very much a gateway band because a lot of crust kids. I came from crust to power violence, you know, and then like grindcore. But like they had like a very much crust aesthetic, crust like ideology and everything. But like musically, they were just straight power violence. You know what I mean? They were like so, power, power violence for the punks. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, Charles Bronson was kind of like that. Like all the crust kids fucked with Charles Bronson. Then you get a little deeper and you like start fucking with like spaz and plutocracy and all that weird yeah. shit, you know? But yeah, that's cool, man. Fuck yeah. What a, what a trip. Shouts out to Ryan for that question. <laughs> <laughs> and a favorite, what was a favorite non-metal riff? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't know. Right? Uh, well, what constitutes a riff is my question, you know? I guess. I guess. Just like, like, any, any, yeah, I, I, you know, it's so funny. I always say riffs all the time. And I guess it's like fucking there's anything. Even slam riffs, like yeah. Jet Judds, it could be like I mean, <laughs> whatever, you know? I mean, there's riffs and there's licks and there's... Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. I mean, it's probably pretty general. I don't know. Right? That's, that's super... That's stupid tough in addition to power violence were you like for quite some time in like a pretty big heart like local bay area hardcore band too right was it hardcore well, i wouldn't say, say big but, but uh, yeah i mean like at least right. like somewhat notable yeah no doubt uh -huh. i mean regional notoriety i write the band still we just don't do anything oh okay still so yeah. active okay nice i mean i wouldn't i don't even know active yeah. but <laughs> hiatus yeah. we, we haven't broken up that's the uh, yeah yeah no doubt who else is in it um jeremy the drummer from abysmalist okay is in it um and then four other people from the bay area who yeah. play in hardcore bands <laughs> uh, so far. yeah bay area hardcore bands he's just kind of like exposed me to that scene a little bit just everything popping off like foghorn and tsunami and all that yeah. it seems like everybody kind of shares members like everybody's the same members of the same that's band sort of and shit like that kind of like generationally there's like a few well, there's a few years of an age gap there so like yeah, yeah. they're youngsters right there, yeah there's like, not a lot yeah. of overlap but yeah like i mean we i'm sure like we're all friends like i don't know it most of the people in those bands but a couple people, people who i do know are are, I've known for a while, I and they're great people. But yeah, yeah. But it's kind you of know weird Joseph how. From Tsunami, right? Huh? You know Joseph? Oh from yeah, he's, Tsunami, he played in. Right? Probably right, right? Oh, okay, yeah, shit. for sure. He filled in for like some tours. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. He, he was one of the dudes I was gonna bring into your guest vocals the other day. But oh yeah. Was, yeah, I think we're doing a fun day now. I was gonna ask him to do do one too. I bet you were. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like a pretty cool sound, and it seems like it's hella cool to see because I often see like I mean, like. Scott from Magasample will like show love to like Gulch and like Tsunami yeah. and shit. It's like cool to see like a like genre crossover. We try to like I'll just share like random music just 
support anything in the underground kind of you know it's, it's yeah. cool it's like i don't know no need to be like hella tribal it's like you know in an echo chamber it's like yeah we're all listening to the same shit you know like every <laughs> week the same shit's dropping we're all listening to the same death metal so it's refreshing to have people share like something from the outside you know yeah, other genres sure. and shit i mean i don't even i'm so bad at keeping up with like new music i would say like modern bay area hardcore is the only uh stuff that i'm actually paying really close attention to yeah oh nice yeah. for sure that's sick so like you're like kind of in like a I don't know, I guess a, a vacuum pendant when you're recording your music because so you're not listening to like a lot of modern death metal for the most part? Or what are your, like, uh, most it's, of the it's influences? Not intentionally, for, like, really. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I don't know, I just... It's hard to keep I up like with the fucking everything, yeah. I like what I like, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, your shit's like, we're like slapping it on the way over here just to refresh and like that slam riff on... Oh, what's the uh, song called? Dep- Depraved? Oh, fuck, my bad. Sorry. The, uh, no, you're, it's uh, off of self immolation Yeah, yeah, there's I'm, I'm a, fucking, sorry. There's a slam riff in there. That fucking, sure. yeah, I'm sorry. I blanked on the song title, but we we're just, I was like, dude, this is I probably got to be like the best slam riff of like 2020. <laughs> it's like that. It's, it's just so bouncy, it's man. It's like, it's hard. awesome. I think spiritual penury. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Oh. My, my apologies. The one that starts kind of slow and gets fast at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got, Seven? Uh, give the Dead Eyed Stare album a proper release. God damn it. <laughs> who, uh, who are these people? <laughs> we had to get the good ones from the past, dude. I was like, these are like full fucking Nardwar. Right, right, I'm like right, dig, digging deep there. into the archives. Uh, uh, I mean, sure. Whoever wants to put out. Uh, a death grind album from a band that broke up fucking 20 years ago. <laughs> Great, I've, I've got the masters. I'll give them to you. You don't even need to give me any copy. Uh-huh. Hell yeah, that was the homie uh, Jaime from uh, Denunciation. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and Avorsa, yeah. <laughs> so what? That was like a death grind band you used to be in. Did that I was stare? one of my first bands uh, from Stockton. I grew up in Stockton. Yeah. And um, yeah, we we played a lot for a couple of years, and then. I moved to Santa Cruz and everything just sort of fell apart. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of my fault. But. <laughs> Actually happens. We, like... we recorded an album in 2003, burned like 20 copies, and it broke up. So. <laughs> oh, damn. Are they floating? You still have the uh, files and everything? Like floating around? I, I'm pretty sure I do. Oh, nice. Uh, two of the songs are on, on, on YouTube. But, um, someone in, in, in Arizona put, put them up there. But. Damn, that's sick. <laughs> oh, no, to check it out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like to release that shit. I can't get it released 20 years right. later. I put on ice. I, I come back to it every once in a while, and I'm like, I was like 17, 18, and I was like, this shit's pretty good for a, a teenager, you know? Yeah, like, it must be, because usually when you look back, you're hella critical on your own work, you know, like early, early shit, but for it to be like hold up, pretty uh, time tested, that's good. I think my like physical guitar playing ability hasn't improved since then. Like, <laughs> My, like, just like plateaued, right? Just maintained. My like <laughs> knowledge of music has, but like my fingers are still doing the same shit that they were doing back then. So. so, any plans to go with the full band ever? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but it's, at least like live, maybe live shows or something. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's... Because there's ever going to be fucking live dude, shows it's, again. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, can't really see the end of the tunnel, you know? But It would just take so much work. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know a lot of people who can play drums like that. And the ones who I do expect to get paid for it. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't have any money, so... And I'm not going to make any money uh, to pay anybody, so... I went and watched, like, they were hoping to do a uh, recording a live session... And they were kind of getting the drummer of uh, Nerve Exposure caught up with the, the stuff drifts. And obviously, like, not a drummer. He programmed the drums. So, like, they're like, there's definitely some weird nuance shit that, like, drummers maybe wouldn't do. And I was listening to it. And he's like, <laughs> he's just a weird there, like, It doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, like, it was it so funny. It doesn't work. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to make it work. But it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so, like, right. like, they're just, like, explaining it. And so, it's like, yeah, you know, I was just trying to do, like, a defeated sanity thing. I'm like, you're just having this full jump in. I'm like, like, you know, just like a, sanity like time in. the best drummers ever. Just, yeah. just play with him. It was like super, like every goes every, against everything you want to hear, you know, it's where the snare was, it's it was all fucked dumb, up. Dumb version. <laughs> yeah. Defeat it's defeated sanity part, real quick. But yeah, uh, that really is like a hurdle. Like, the, it's like theory to practice, essentially, you know? Like, it, sometimes it doesn't translate. It's like hella hard for. I, yeah. When I program drums, I, I like, I keep drumsticks next to my computer. And Do you I, think and about it? Like, I, what? Like, just to make sure oh, it's yeah. possible? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I am not very good at the drums, but I can play the drums. 
and I'll like you know I'll like slow the project down to like from like 240 BPM down to like 150 mm -hmm. and I'll play it and I'll try and play along and see if it's possible yeah, yeah for sure and if it is I'll speed back up and yeah, keep going but yeah especially yeah. on on the the new record like I wanted it to be like when I made the the demo I was like what's the fastest blast beat I can program on a computer that sounds like it couldn't be played by a person mm -hmm. you know and I did that and that was cool and then with the next one I was like what's the fastest blast beat that sounds like realistic it could like someone maybe be played by yeah, yeah. I, yeah yeah well <laughs> he was just like weren't you just asking if those were track drums like or acoustic drums that were tracked or like like no those are just programmed yeah they fucking sound like they sound very awesome there's a programming yeah. on there yeah thanks I spent <coughs> like literally like multiple days on getting tones like no meticulously dropping every hit and yeah. like adjusting the adjusting the placement of it like so it like is not directly on the grid yeah because yeah. no human can play directly on a grid and yeah. when, if you program if you hit this is gonna get crazy nah, go for it <laughs> if you know if you're programming drums and you put a snare and a kick in exactly the same spot and they play at the same time it doesn't sound like two drums playing yeah and so like I'll you need like that, I'll, like, that tiny bit like, of a like, slight delay bit off yeah and like make it so like one hit sounds harder than the other mm-hmm and I, I did that, and I didn't do that a whole lot for the, the demo, and that's why it's obvious that it's fake. But on the new one, I was like, I'm going to spend as long as I have to to make this sound like a person played it. It sounds, like, so good, the production on that. And, like, we are just how, like, the, the songs run together, too. Like, everything is just, like, you listen to it from beginning to end. It's like, it's fucking, it's, it's a great production, man. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, it came out great. It doesn't say it a lot in, like, the promotional material, materials or whatever, but, like, it, I wrote a uh, self-immolation suite as... A suite, so like one. It's, it's one, one it's, whole piece. It's, yeah. one, it's one song, basically. Gotcha. You know. Uh, yeah. No, if you're not paying attention, you won't even really notice. And like the songs transition. It's hard. It's that's just some like nerd shit that I did for some reason that probably is working against me. So it's just easier to say, oh, it's it's five songs on a record, you know, like. Yeah. But it is it is really. It's cool. Well, the song. thing is, like, each of them stand alone on themselves. Like, you can listen to it, and like. There's not like any like maybe like straight up strictly like inter interlude tracks or anything like that transitional yeah. tracks. So like the the tracks on them own are like standalone great, but even together it's like fucking makes it sound even better, you know? Nice. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you rather have them have it be like just one track like on streaming like just like everything? No, because I know no one will listen to it. Yeah, that. for sure. Yeah, but, I no mean, one like, playlist, <laughs> a lot of stuff like that. Like, no doubt. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I mean it, it just works better this way. Like, yeah, it's, for sure. I don't know, like. Put on a single and shit. It was definitely like a cool idea, I guess. But I'm, you know, the next thing I do is just gonna be like a bunch of songs. Yeah, it's for not, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which leads uh, there was like another question. Somebody's asking like full uh, full length in the in the works. Is that kind of next for you, or what Eventually, you think? Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I mean, I'm not working on it yet. It's like I don't know yeah. about it in the works, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm just, we talk about like releases all the time, and especially now it's kind of interesting because you can't play shows and stuff like. I kind of personally like smaller, like maybe EPs, like more frequent releases from bands, just as like a fan of bands, you know? Yeah. I think it's cool. You get hyped up and it's like fun, like, you know, hyping up releases. I mean, it depends and, on the band, too. Though. I guess I guess so. Like Some for, bands are better EP bands yeah, and stuff, exactly. I guess. But you just don't want it. You don't need to be here more than fucking 20 minutes of straight ignorance at a time. Yeah. Like, stuff on side. I love stuff on side, but it's like, yeah, no, you're exactly. an EP band, nah, dude. That's straight up. Yeah. <laughs> you can probably like a degenerate, wanna, like, I wouldn't like want to listen to more than fucking. 20 minutes of my own shit. Yeah, right? I think so, slam like, albums are even kind of rough, you know? It's right? like little slam EPs can be kind of cool, listen. but... I can't listen to a whole <laughs> it's a, it's a slam album yeah. all the way through. It sure. gets a little redundant. So I guess it is genre-specific, but what do, you, what do you prefer? Do you kind of... Coming from a background and maybe Power Mountain Punk, you like... I know that's like a lot of like the age, like seven inches and splits and like yeah. even a ridiculous splits, you know? Sure. <laughs> 28 bands on there and shit. <laughs> uh, I've got a pretty short attention span. Uh, I definitely... When it's time to, to, to start work on something new, I, I'm, it's going to be an LP... But an LP for me is is like uh, uh, like ten songs or a half an hour, whichever comes first. Yeah, Cause, right. Because yeah. I don't want them to be too long. Even when I see a band live, I don't want a band to play for more than twenty yeah, minutes. Yeah, you know? like, totally. And I, once you start getting in, like when I see albums that are really long, I get nervous because I'm like, they're probably added some throw like 
tracks on there that probably should have been throwaways you know what i mean there's probably like some filler tracks not to be mean to anybody especially like well i'm big in rap so i see i see like you know you see like an album that has like 18 songs and i'm like oh there's a bunch of b-side fucking gar- garbage on there kind of you know like throw that out but i'd rather just condense it down like just distilled to like a good ass 30 minutes you know yeah. easy listening yeah all my favorite records are less than a half an hour long so yeah no one no one wants to hear for that long. Sure. <laughs> even one bit, I mean, we've just been like conditioned now, like maybe back in the day and shit where you didn't really have the choice, you had to listen to like a whole CD, you know, you'd have like an incredible collection, but now it's like with streaming, it's like our attention, yeah. we're like conditioned and trained ourselves to be like, all right, I'll listen to a few what's songs. Next? And, yeah, That's what's the, next? I mean, yeah, today, like, not, not only does no one want to hear Unnerment for half an hour, no one wants to hear any band for, you know, it's. Yeah. When I. When I so after the, I made the the demo, before I knew Scott or anything, I was gonna I was, my plan was oh I'm gonna put this on on Bandcamp, no one's gonna listen to it, and uh-huh. then I'm gonna do a, a single after that, uh, that being like self immolation suite. I was like oh it'll be a single, but it's gonna be yeah. like 15 minutes long. You know? Yeah, gotcha. Uh, because I because no one's li- wants albums anymore, and the, and I thought if I just like you know make a single here and a single there and an EP there and like. It'll, especially a band that doesn't play live, like yeah, the, right. You have to be constantly doing constantly. something. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally, I love like the visual aspect of music so much. So like dropping singles, even like a music video. I mean, even if it's like some animation or something, you know, like something like yeah, just content. You, yeah, just some content. Like it's it's fucking cool. I like whenever there's like a cool visual companion to like a song, you know. And whenever you kind of have the opportunity to drop a single, I, don't, I, I just as a fan, I get hyped, you know? Like, yeah. oh, something pops up on my YouTube, you know? Like, oh, that's fucking sick. The Sangui Suko Bog videos. Super cool, you know? It was like, yeah. that was pretty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wild, man. It was, like, it, was like, it was a cool idea, you know? Something maybe not tapped into enough, you know? Yeah. But I know from a financial standpoint, it's like fucking hard to find. Not everybody can go like get trauma and share, you know, or yeah. what is it pronounced trauma or trauma, you know? Yeah. Talks to oh, the venture cats. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Trauma. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, music videos are fucking sick. Singles, all that shit. I love it. Yeah. But then I, I mean, after I thought of that, I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm old. I hate using, like, I'm just not a social media guy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to make an album. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cool. It's like, I mean, not being like, because it's fucking kind of, I don't want to say unfortunate, but it's kind of a big part of it right now. It's like kind of the only part in the whole like social media, you know, with the band. So like you not being a big social media guy, it's cool that you can get hooked up with like Scott from Magstomp because he has like that huge religious following <laughs> behind him, you know, damn near. So yeah, he, he definitely deserves yeah, that like, platform. He needs like executive producer credit on, on, on the records because he's, he's helped me out a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. Maybe talk like just like the relationship, like his role as a label. I'm just kind of curious because we're stumbling through it. We're like running this label and I've don't really know, have any knowledge of how to run a label. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Like everybody's like, what, what's kind of like, what, what's the role of the label, what people's opinions are and everything, you know? Um, but, I mean, anything that Unearnment does besides making music is is because of Scott. Like the shirts, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. The, like, it, you know. It, Just support all around. That's like, you focus on making the music, kind of he takes everything, he put, takes care of the rest. Uh, I put, so I put the demo on Bandcamp February 2019, mm-hmm. and like the next day after I uploaded it, he sent me a, a message like, like, hey, if you need uh, help, for, like putting this on tape, let me know. And I was like, what do you need help? Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm not gonna put this on tape. I don't want to put any money into. Like, I don't have any money to put things on tape. You know, yeah. I don't have a label. I'm not trying to like go to the post office and send out a bunch of tapes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so yeah, and, that part's real. Yeah, right and up, so I was like, yeah, I was like, I think I responded like, like I don't not like. I don't really have any plan to like put this out like in a physical format, but, like. Yeah. And he's like, "No, I'm I'm asking if you want me to put it in on tape." And I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> okay." Yeah, that's crazy. The next day, that, that will, yeah, he's it on it. Like, it was like the next day or the day after that. I'm not sure. And um, I had bought uh, I had bought the 2019 like maggot song roster long, long sleeve. Yeah, yeah. And after I uh, after I was like, "Yeah, you can put it out on tape," he refunded me my money. And then uh, put my put the Unermit logo on the shirt. And, Aww. Then, and that's fucking awesome. Fuck yeah. Sent me a shirt when it came out. Hell that's yeah. awesome. Uh, Shout out Scott. <laughs> nice ass dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, cool. he's, he's awesome. 
Uh, he's definitely, yeah, like, after the, the demo came out, he's like, hey, do you want to do a shirt? And I was like, okay, yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck yeah. That's and cool, then, man. Yeah. Yeah, giving a bunch of cool opportunities. That's why it should be, I feel like, it's, like, more of a supportive position where it's, like, I, we just try to, like, obviously align ourselves with bands to kind of have, like, similar goals and similar vision and, like, with stuff. It's, like, all right, we just, like, brainstorm. Like, where do we want to go? Like, we're going to have some merch. Just, like, brainstorm all the ideas. What's it going to take to get there? Pretty much just, like, yeah, you make the music, we'll fucking handle everything else, coordinating it. Shirts made, releases, like, we have, like, some ridiculous fucking ideas, but it's all fun, man. It's, like, that's what it's all about, you know? It's kind of more of a collaborative effort, you know? You're way sure. more involved in this Nuff machine than you are in the other bands that are... Yeah, yeah, just because we're, like, fucking that's, pretty that, good friends and shit, you know? Like and and now you're, like, but... we haven't announced it yet, but he's, like, kind of part of the label now. Like, oh, cool. so, yeah, brought him into the fold. So it's me, my homie Kenny. He's, like, I, I think he runs into you at the co-op pretty frequently or something. Yeah, I Yeah. Yeah, he's cool, man. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Sorry. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you got, like, your social media fans either about to show up to your work, dude, the stalkers, the unearned. <laughs> yeah, no, that, no, not at all. <laughs> I revealed the location. Oh, yeah. like, Anyone want to come see me? <laughs> yeah. Slide through. Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op in there on Tuesday through Saturday. <laughs> we can do some real fresh produce, hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was me and Kenny, and it's just like, we've been working with Seven, fucking on stuff and on site shit, and always kind of like, just it's like always good to have a second opinion, because sometimes you're like, I don't know, you get lost in the sauce, so it's like an outside perspective is good, so we'll send music, sure. hey, what do you think about this? Or like, so we're like, fuck man, we ask your opinion so much, and he helps us out with like random tasks and stuff, so we're like, let's just bring you in, dude, so. <laughs> Yeah, especially for like a one-person band. I'm sure like yeah. y- your relationship is s- similar to me and Scott. Like, I played yeah. I played in bands over half my life now. You always have like the people you're you're playing in a band with, and like you you bounce things off each other and you come up with ideas together. And when it's just me, like I just get n- nothing would get done if it were just me because I that's good feedback. Oh, that you know I'm that's a good point. Doubting yeah, myself you know, all the time. Yeah, and, uh, like, you're your own biggest true critic naturally. Sure. When and, you like created the art, you're kind of like attached to it. And you're like, oh look, you know, it's like which yeah, is, you have your doubts about it. Yeah. Which is why, like, I'm sure Scott's gonna watch this and he's gonna be like, this is a fucking idiot. But like, <laughs> but like, I almost view Scott as like executive producer of like the the, the stuff that Unherman has, 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 has put out. Oh, that's so sick. Like, it must be like a very similar relationship because I talk to him on the phone all the time and everything he does, like songs, like how we want to roll it out or introduce something, you know, we, just all, we always bounce ideas off each other. That's interesting, that dynamic of the one-man band, because you don't have that, like you said, you don't have the band members, you kind of, yeah. so like the, yeah, the it's role of the, the label is like almost super important yeah. at that point, so it's like, like yeah, the producer and shit. Yeah, yeah that's you're, interesting. You're the, other person, you're the second opinion. Yeah. For me. For you, yeah. <laughs> it has to be the second opinion. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No, pretty, cool. much, pretty much anything Snuff does goes for you. Like, any idea that I have, pretty much. Yeah. The first person I know about. Also, Scott's the person who says no to all of my bad ideas. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have somebody like the tough love, you know, just to be like, you know, you don't want yes men around you all the time, for sure. You gotta have somebody like, nah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> the vinyl version. I think he's even told me, we've had some bad ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's also, he's, he's very... I appreciate the opinion, uh, though, straight he's up. He's very open to sharing his, his opinion on things, which is... Which is a it's a valuable yeah, opinion, yeah. you know, it's doing well. It's like the proof's in the pudding, so it's like, some people are dumb, they might get their feelings hurt, but I fucking listen, you know, I take it, like, into account, you know? It's like, yeah, I appreciate your opinion. Yeah, sure. That's no, cool, was, I mean, like, I wanted to put an etching on the B-side of the, the LP, and he was like, no, we're going to put the, the demo on the B-side of the LP. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, that's a fucking good move, yeah, yeah, definitely. The other idea I had, which he said no to, was putting a, a, a Nerman branded matchbook in the LP. Uh, yeah, I remember... Like, I remember... <laughs> Oh, I was talking to Nate Faye, and he said he wanted to do, like, a smoke pack kind of thing. And Scott was like, nope. Yeah, he's very particular. It seems like he's very particular with, you know, like, the merch he goes with. (laughs) Hey, everybody's, like, got, I guess, like, on brand, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just just thought it'd be cool because it's the, like, self-immolation suite. It's a song about lighting yourself on fire. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And I thought it'd be, like, a a self-immolation starter pack or something. (laughs) It just didn't didn't happen, but... Oh, yeah. The novelty thing. Sometimes it's like the good, the good, good idea, but it's hard to execute, yeah. I guess, sometimes. But, but <laughs> yo, I'm going to get, get a custom-made on her pack of matches. <laughs> Box oh of matches. I think that ship has sailed. <laughs> That's funny. That's a cool idea, though. But, speaking of, uh, you got the last one, the owner, yeah, or the, the self-immolation suite? The what inspired self-immolation suite, and have you considered setting yourself a place? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Those are his consideration. Uh, <laughs> self-immolation 
we, well, I mean, like every Unearned song, and pretty much every song I've ever written, is basically about, uh, you know, like self doubt and like hating yourself, like so many people do. It's like a pretty normal thing, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a song about trying to escape yourself and not being able to. Yeah. So you know, it's like, I never, as a music fan, especially within death metal, a lot of it's like kind of like fantastical stuff. So like the lyrics, it's like I don't really get too much out of it. Sure. Like I love death metal, but like something like that can really resonate with you, you know. So it's like interesting to see like death metal bands who take a little different approach with like the lyrical content, you know. It's like fun talking about like you know oohs and fucking tar pits and shit, sure. you know, <laughs> swamps and everything, you know. But like right. that's pretty neat. Like lyrically, I don't think Iron Man is that different from a lot of death metal bands. Like like you know, it's written in like in death metal English or whatever in, yeah. in like a fantastical way I think the only real difference is like the, the, me, the meaning behind it yeah. it's like you know it's probably more self-reflective of a lot of than a lot of like other metal bands well, that's yeah. kind of cool too because people can read into it kind of both ways probably yeah I mean I've yeah I've never killed anyone so I'm not going to write a <laughs> song about killing somebody or, yeah, I don't know. no doubt <laughs> and then like the Abysmalist, I think, is kind of the opposite. Like, an a, a really, like, personal thing. It's just me. So, like, I'm writing from my perspective on a lot of things. And, and then for Abysmalist, to, to tr sort of, like, separate the two, I'm, like, I, it's mostly inspired by things I've read or things I've seen. And it's a lot of, like, human condition shit. Like, like uh, obsession and, and things. Like, uh, not, like, there's some more like horror type lyrics for Abysmalist but it's because yeah. I was reading like a Clive Barker short story <laughs> yeah, for, you know, yeah. like, no doubt that's interesting so like on, on that time like just like talk touch on all of those like lyrical themes and everything for an do you like read any like psychology philosophy no, no. just kind of just like your personal experience I, and everything you're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I'm living this shit <laughs> personal experience <laughs> uh, Good shit, man. It's been, uh, I guess we'll kind of wrap it up here, but usually at the end, we just kind of give the opportunity to, like, maybe shout out a band, like, you feel like maybe deserves some more love. It could be new or old, whatever, whatever's clever, you know. Don't necessarily have to be active. Shouts out Dead Eye Stare. No. Shouts out Joe. You're saying no. That's no. <laughs> Say no. That was my shout out. That's I don't know. Let's we're gonna dig up those uh, samples off of YouTube, or we're gonna edit it in, man. We're oh my god. <laughs> throw the Dead Eye Stare on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Honestly, the, the Dead Eye Stare stuff is fine. I'm I'm kind of, I'm proud of that. But Children's Crusade, Children's Crusade was not a good band. <laughs> it was bad. What, what, if you kind of had to describe what you sounded like a band, or what you guys thought you sounded like, <laughs> or what wanted to sound like back then. I mean, it was Charles Bronson-ish. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. that's probably my favorite Power Bronson <laughs> band of all time. Yeah. What? Yeah, I love Charles Bronson. That's like kind of was the first band that it's alongside Capitalist Casualties. But I was always like just more of a goofy cat. So I like leaned more in towards like Charles Bronson, you know, more than like the Capitalist Casualties aesthetic. That's why I really like Spaz and all the stupid shit kind of, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, the, the Spaz, like Spaz was great. Don't get me wrong. But like the last Spaz album when they like kind of like streamlined everything and they were just like an extreme hardcore band. Yeah. That stuff I think is like the best. Like, Hell yeah. I wasn't, like, we weren't good. The Children's Crusade wasn't good enough to play that. It was kind of like a goofy power balance thing. Yeah, that's fun, man. That's like, metal's an interesting genre because I guess you could, like, I don't want to say you have to be good to play it, but, I mean, punk and power balance is way more forgiving. So you could just kind of start out, like, me and my friend Ian were even just talking about fucking around and starting, like, a little... Power Bonds band with some slams in there or something. You know? <laughs> but it was like, yeah, I could fucking have played drums in years, but I think I could I could manage. No, no. <laughs> it, won't, it won't take too much. But, yeah, man. So what's your what's your shout out? Shout out? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, again, like, I don't keep up with a lot of stuff. Oh, like um, I said, but... it could be like old bands, whatever. Maybe yeah. just some shit you feel like maybe slept on a little bit, you know? A lot the, of people don't know about. The, the Della Quest demo? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like, it's the bass player, I think, from Distant Tomb. Distant Tomb, yeah. Plays guitar in that, and that's, like, so fucking good. Like, Sounds like some fucking straight up, like, Long Island, like, New York death metal from, like, Australia. It's like, yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's crazy, like, yeah. Some, I like that the vocals aren't the crazy, like, the gurgly, like, 
like it's like a, it's sort of like a, like a dying fetus type like mid range yeah like bark yeah but still like a br- brutal to death metal band I thought that demo was crazy good yeah I'm gonna have to check that out it's good. dude it's sick yeah life after death put it out that oh, was like sure. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right but. Uh, who is I don't know is anyone I don't, know. <laughs> I don't even know you gotta be like French Canadian sounds like a French then, word or something yeah. <laughs> and then also uh, Wound Man which is a power violence band oh, okay nice from new from uh, from Massachusetts okay but, nice yeah uh, it's like the one of the guitar players from the rival mob uh, which is like a uh, it's his like started out as like a solo project power violence band recorded on like a, f- a four track uh, it's since become like a live band like I, they played uh, in Oakland like a couple years ago and they're just really good nice yeah. that's what's up that's cool I'm like so out of loop with power violence so I'm kind of me and my friend was just talking and he's like kind of I'm more going towards obviously like leaning in on the metal side he's kind of still like more in punk you know so he's like uh we want to start a band, so I'm like, I'm like, I gotta throw slam riffs in there somehow. <laughs> but he's like, and then, you know, Power Violence always has those real sludgy, like, slow parts anyway, yeah. so I'm like, dude, we can just substitute that out for, like, some sick-ass slam riffs, so we have, like, the fast, like, blast and everything, but I don't know, but, yeah, little, so I haven't thought about Power Violence for a while, so that's good you, like, recommended it's, kind of a newer band. It's hard, there's, like, I mean, Power Violence, you say that so many people are like, oh, like, a goofy Power Violence band with, like, samples and, like, joke songs, and, like, mm-hmm. no, there's, like, I mean, I'm like 30 fucking six years old. Like, I'm not trying to listen to like some goofy power violence. Like, there's like. Yeah, some <laughs> fans talk about shitting their pants at a skate park or something, you know? It's like, all right, dude. I can't like relate some, anymore. There's like a uh, unit some, and stuff, you some, know? Some dark music made by tortured people out there. Like, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yo, just real quick, I know like there was like an. Uh, I'm fucking terrible. I'm so bad about remembering song titles. I apologize. But there was like an intro where it was almost like kind of melodic with it on uh, Self Immolation Suite. It was almost reminiscent of something like Page 99. Did you ever like fuck around with any like scrams or what the dorks uh, call scrams? No, I'm just uh, curious. Okay, I heard it like my, my ear like went there. I was like, oh damn, that's crazy. It was like I felt like you like mix maybe like unknowingly just like hella, hella genres in, you know? You kind of just was, yeah, that, kind of untethered when you write. You're just like whatever you kind of fucking yeah, kind of. On, right? Yeah. I think that song so the way that unearned songs come together is like the beginning of the song is recorded like the final version the beginning of the song is recorded before the end of the song is even written most of the time what the fuck so like i'm writing and recording the song at my computer um it just kind of works itself out like it's not necessarily premeditated and shit kind of for, for the most part and, yeah that's it that, that's cool how often are you going back like so what you've already recorded, like, are you just oh, like, constantly editing, like, what you already have? Constantly. Okay, gotcha. And, like, so that, I, I can't remember because it was a couple years ago, but I'm pretty sure that started as, like, me just, like, f- fucking around with, like, a clean guitar thing, uh-huh. and then I, and then coming back to it, and then just adding on to it, and then adding on to it, and then moving things around. Yeah, and gotcha. And eventually it became a song, you know, like. How, like, with that process, though, it's a wild card. How do you know when it's done? It's like, you know, like, the fucking painter, like, keeps adding a little fucking shit, you know? <laughs> like, every time you listen to it, like, I just keep adding, like... When I or, can't stand to work on it. Okay, gotcha. Right, right, you're like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> on to the next one. Like, this is <laughs> ending, like, I guess. It's probably a not... It's probably a not a very efficient way to, like, make music, but, like... It's fucking turned out sick, though. It's, I'm it's like, unorthodox, you know? It's kind of cool. I'm, like, writing, recording, and mixing... Yeah. This, these songs all at the same time. <laughs> Ridiculous. And then going back and fixing things and like changing, like being like, oh, I don't like this section of this riff, and then I'll record seriously like a two second section of a riff and just drop it in. Or if there's even been a couple times when like I didn't like the way a riff was and I just edited the riff itself and just moved it around and made a new riff out of it. Uh-huh. Damn. Uh huh. Damn. Like a wild. It's kind of <laughs> stupid, <that's> really honestly. <laughs> it's, and it, uh, it's super unique, you know? It's got a like, it's got a like novel, like the, the process and everything, but. That's cool, man. Going back to uh, Ab- Ab- Abysmalist, it's like the complete opposite of that. Like Abysmalist is like me, it's like me and two other guys in a room and we're just rocking out. Yeah, you know? Yeah. like all right, we have this riff here and then it goes to this part and when I come back, yeah, it's kind of very like structured probably songs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And Unerman is like a f- fucking uh, n- neurotic person sitting at his computer like <laughs> meticulously <laughs> changing like the, the velocity of drum hits and, yeah. and, and editing riffs and it fucking sounds awesome, man. It's a great, uh, it's a great, 
I guess EP, you know, it's a great suite. Mm -hmm. It just slaps. It's a, it's a single, technically. It's a, yeah, it's a great, it's a great single. single. whatever. Hey, that's oh, the best yeah, single of 2020, sure enough. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Not a single. Uh, well, you got any shout outs, Seven? Uh, Anybody to check out? Yeah, sure. Uh, this band called American Head Charge. Oh, God. <laughs> I used to uh, I used to live with them in Minneapolis. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> like oh, like you're like a little ass kid, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like six, six or seven. That's like a new I'm, metal band, right? You know, I'm pretty sure I saw them like at Austin. Uh, I bet you did. Oh, shit, they they're like almost in the realm of like orgy and like uh, kind of in that realm. Or did they dress like kind of wild like that and yeah. shit too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they that was, like that was so. They were part. They were part of that whole wave, but they're not like really like that new metally. Like, I don't know, I've been on a kick, like, since I've been out here for whatever reason. I, I just moved back to Minneapolis, like, kind of recently, so I was like, mm. But, uh, you know, like, it's really, they're, they're really heavy. Like, it's, I gotta listen it's to pretty it. gnarly. I'll check it out on the drive home. Yeah, they got, some, they got some crazy shit. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I've been, like, revisiting all corn and shit. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, like, no, I'm I not, saying, a, yeah, I can't the, deny it, dude. Like, corn's can, heavy. Can, like, some of that new metal shit was fucking fun. Yeah, no, they Flaps. got fucking, they got hell of riffs. The dude can actually sing. His harsh vocals are dope. I don't know, just hella like industrial, just like little tweaks and shit. Like it's dope. They're fucking. There's good ass songs. That's it. Oh yeah. They're a little corny, obviously. They're fucking from like 2001 or whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, I'm gonna should have heard what I was doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, I've been on a kick, so that's my shout out. Isn't like new metal? Like I don't know, but there isn't there like a little like resurgence of new metal? It's like some bands totally. like trying to straight yeah. do that. That's so weird. Yeah. Everybody heard true. Bane and they're like, we can do that. <laughs> no, but Tear Factory, those first like yeah. three albums are so fucking good. Dude, I I even like I mean a hell of people hate on it, but I'll th still throw in like White Zombie and Rob Zombie. Some of that also, oh, dude. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's fun, man. That's I, different. That's like almost classic rock. At this I know, point, right? but it's, it's kind of yeah. Also so good. Like yeah, yeah it's so like yeah, it's so good. I just kind of leaped it in. I don't know why that's like all I just like think of like that was all like 12 year old rock. You know, I was like 12 yeah. or 13, you're in middle school, you listen to like, you know, a bunch of like Dude, still random to this, corn. To this day, corn is one of the heaviest fucking bands I've ever seen. Yeah. Live? Yeah. yeah, dude. It's like, like, uh -huh. they're stupid heavy. It's like crazy. The bass. Like, they sound perfect. <laughs> bass tone was so heavy it didn't even matter what notes he was playing. And he <laughs> yeah, played right. it like at his ankles like always like <laughs> oh man hello <laughs> low yeah, with man. it dude that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> i got a fucking uh so dimple obviously you know shut down but they have up in Folsom at the dimple location they opened up like a independent record store called the cave oh really yeah and i went and they have like some vhs's and they had like a bunch of i got like a bootleg carcass vhs and a bootleg corn vhs so <laughs> yeah we're about to maybe throw that on tonight <laughs> i saw i saw corn and rob zombie in 98 god damn holy shit at, uh, nice at arco arena that's oh like fuck yeah, oh, yeah. Both of them. Oh, arco so arena. Fuck. they probably changed my life honestly that's like, so good. Good. they were like probably like Corn was probably like brand new around that time, huh? They were like that was in like the height of their career, like almost. That, like, was, that definitely, was like Follow the Leader and was, Hellbilly Deluxe. It was definitely yeah, the that's height. Crazy. The height, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. like, Corn had been around since '94. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. But it was Rob Zombie's first uh, so, like solo album. Solo right? album. He yeah. was touring on that album, and like. Did I see footage from that tour? It's it was insane. Crazy. There's fucking robots and yeah, lasers, dude. but what also, <laughs> but also robots like and lasers. <laughs> robots. <laughs> But also, like, <laughs> yeah. people knew him as the singer for White Zombie, so they played mostly White Zombie shit. Oh, yeah. It was so for good. For sure. That's and awesome. I was That's dope. 14 years old, so I was like, my dad took me and my best friend at the time, and like, uh, That's how it goes, huh? People were smoking <laughs> weed there, and like, I'd never smoked weed before, but like, I definitely got a contact high. Yeah, <laughs> rock and roll. I fell yeah. I, I like passed out in the backseat on the way home. <laughs> I just, I, I bought a corn shirt at that show and I just sold it on this like Instagram live auction for like $90. Damn. Holy shit. It's OG. Dude. I mean, it's OG. Yeah, it's I fucking would, sweet. I'd probably buy that fucking OG corn shirt for $90. <laughs> it's a I got, shirt. I got more shirts. <laughs> That's awesome. Want. Oh, yeah. I love uh, the homie Kenny. He had, all right, we're just going off in the weeds here. We'll wrap it up. But he had a dope, in middle school, he had the dopest corn shirt. It was the one where it was like a kid, it was like an illustration, <laughs> like a, almost like a cartoon drawing of a kid with a Walkman. And like the cord, the headphone cord spelled out cord. Oh, yeah. It was hella oh, dope. Yeah. yeah, it's like he's like got the headphones That's on. Sick. That was fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely uh, a sign of the times of like a Walkman. But yeah. yeah. Really. <laughs> That's funny. 
we'll see, man. We'll wrap it up. Oh, I guess I'll shout out um, a band. It's awesome. It's a Canadian kind of death grind band called uh, Grotesque Mass. <laughs> Very cool. We're about to uh, some oh, yeah. shameless self promotion, but we're gonna put out, oh. put out. Yeah, they have a demo out, and they're uh, releasing another little EP, so it's gonna be a little compilation tape. But it's, I guess it's death grind, but it's almost more just like straight up grind kind of. It's definitely like very reminiscent of like the kind of the power line stays too. Some of those vibes, you know. I haven't listened to that music in a while, but so it's like kind of straight up grind with some very guttural vocals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's good shit. So, oh yeah. What? Peace out, everyone. Ah. <laughs>